let's take a look at national pride. I have a collection of currency from before the euro took over in, in Europe. And the currency, who do you put on your currency? It's like important people, right? That's who you, you put important people on your money because you're looking at them every day. It's like, this is, he's one of us or she's one of us. This is what you do. So here's some currency from Europe, pre-euro currency. And everyone on this is a scientist, basically. Uh, we got uh, uh, Copernicus here. With, he, he put the sun back in the middle. Of the sun. Uh, that's uh, Poland. We've got Italy with Marconi, who pioneered radio communication. Also Italy, we have uh, Alexandra Volta, okay, responsible for the, the vault, not the car, <laughs> but the unit of uh, electrical, um, uh, 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 the, the electromotive force in a battery is the volt. Uh, this is Antoine saint exupéry not a scientist, but an aviator. And look what this him, look at this super little boy. <laughs> Cute little boy. Who is that? It's the little prince. He wrote the story, the little prince. So, so in France, they're loving the man and they're putting him on his money. If you flip these bills, let's flip them over, then you get to see the iconography related to their trade. Tesla loved him some electricity and you know it by flipping over that bill, all right? <laughs> um, here, Copernicus. We have the sun back in the center of the, of the known universe. The artist had a little too much free play there, I would say. <laughs> but it's the, it's the thought that counts. Um, here, these are radio towers for Marconi. This is Volta's tomb. I would have put a battery here to represent him. <laughs> Not a mausoleum, but uh, there's the biplane that a Chupere flew. And there's telescopes and some other measuring instruments for a Bulgarian guy. Why am I going, taking you down this road? Because these are countries that are famous and well known and we know of their culture and they've had an impact on the world. Not always positive, but certainly they've had influence and they're putting their greatest scientists on their currency. Okay, so then I thought about that and I looked at Carl Frederick Gauss and I said, what, what do I notice on that bill? And I, and I zoom in and I said, what? 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 There's a mathematical distribution function on the currency. It's got f of x, 1 over the square root, 2 pi, x axis, y axis, it's a curve, and it's on the currency. But in Germany, as a kid, you see this, I don't know what that is, but it's probably something important. And Gauss is probably an important guy. You can influence entire generations of people when a nation feels this way. In America, do we, do we have a scientist on our money? Wow. Wow. You all know this. You all got money. That's what this seems like. A hundred dollar bill. This is the largest bill we currently mint in the United States. So, all right, so we got Ben Franklin, very well known for experiments in electricity. And so here I am, I'm ready to see what iconography have we put on the bill to reflect his interest in electricity. Is there a lightning bolt? <laughs> no. Is there, well, what tool did he use to try to get the lightning? A kite, is there a kite? No. What would it have taken to put a kite in this picture? You could even just leave it stuck in the tree or something. You know what else Penn Franklin invented? The lightning rod. Is there a lightning rod? No. Lightning rod is one of the most brilliant inventions there ever were because of its simplicity and its effectiveness. Here's an interesting fact. Back in the late 1700s, early 1800s, what's the tallest building in any town? The church. So if you're a lightning bolt, what is the first building you're going to hit? The church. Ben Franklin was accused of heresy because before his lightning rod, the churches that were struck by lightning, that was used as, an, that was used as evidence by the churches that weren't that they were worshiping a false god. Well, we still save lives to this day. A low-tech, high-principle 
uh, solution to a problem, and none of that is recognized in our currency. That worries me. So let's think about what it means to have the rise and fall of science. It can rise and not stay that way. You can take it for granted and not think you have to continue to invest in it. Think that it's just the, the, the conduct of some privileged few. Why does anyone else care? Why should you care? 